Good morning, Leo here. Good morning. I'm looking for the foreman. Yes, sir. How can I help you? Hi, I'm calling. This is uh, Nick calling from uh, Systems. Right. And I'm calling in regards to the, the work that you, uh, you uh, performed last week on right. uh, building number four out here at a complex. Okay. What, what, uh, how can we I help have, you? I have never seen such shoddy work in my life, and this is really screwing up my production line. Okay. What I, sorry, I'm sorry. So what seems to be the problem? Now, your company is responsible for the duct work that went in. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. I don't know. First off, we weren't impressed by the guys that you had sent out here. Your okay, workers. We, 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 we stand behind the quality of our work. What seems to be the problem? Look, Leo, I'm glad you're standing behind it because the duct has fallen onto the major computer assembly area. So that, that's absolutely impossible. We've never had it any It fell kind of down on our, uh, on our equipment, and our assembly area is completely shattered. We're lucky that we didn't lose a few workers down here. That 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 there has to be some kind of mistake there. There have to have been other contractors on your job. That Sir, you were the only one out here doing this work, the, and this is the number I had. I, I was on site the, the inspection. Myself. I remember going through the site myself. The work was. It has to have look, been Jason. Kind of I've got to tell you something. My boss, when he comes in here, I called him about an hour ago, and he's on his way down here to take a look at this. Heads are going to roll on this one. There shouldn't be any heads rolling. The whole production kind, has been sir. shut down. Do you know what kind of uh, production we have here? Well, in this yes, building? Course, you saw I'm, by the criteria where, and, 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 and I, the, I, the ramifications I, I, of this I, are mind-boggling. I understand the implications completely, and I, I understand the gravity of the situation completely. I, I can't stress to you enough. Look, though, now, who is your insurance carrier? Wait, wait. Because wait, this wait. is going to cost you, you, you. This is going to cost your ass on this one. This, this, this can't be right. Like I say, there has to have been someone else on site. We, we, we the ductwork fell down. That's all I know. And you're the number I have. You're the foreman. This is supposed you're to responsible have fallen on, for this. on your computer system. It fell on the whole production area that you put in building number three. It, it can't be right. That can't be right. I, as I say, I was on site. Several times, I know the quality of our work. Well, it fell have... down. <clears throat> what? Uh... You say you stand behind your work? Well, well, absolutely, absolutely. I, Look, I, I'm uh... going to tell you, Leo. Hands are going to roll on this one. We're not happy with this. We're well, talking a major lawsuit. If there, that's, I don't think that anything like that would be necessary. I mean, I'm sure that if there is some kind of a, a... lost production time, you're probably going to cost our company two million dollars. So if it's not fixed by the end of today, and I don't, I don't see how we're going to get the new, the new production equipment in here. I, 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 I really cannot understand. I cannot fathom how, how this uh, could have happened. As I say, I was on site. I, I know the quality. Leo, of our what I can tell you is, the crew that you had down here, what a bunch of asses. We hadn't had any complaints throughout the entire duration of Leo, our work. I, we, we, we were thinking of telling you that maybe you should turn on your radio. It's Lamont Tonelli on 92.3 KSJO. Oh, Leo, surely. it's Dirty oh. Friday, bro. You're on the air. <laughs> oh, good God. You've got to be kidding me. You're on the air. I've been sitting here, I've, I've been sitting here getting ready to dial the other line for the corporate attorney, and I was going through the insurance papers. <laughs> now, I, Leo, who yeah. I, can, I was trying to figure out who's, who I can call and chew. <laughs> Leo, the guys that you had working for you said this was pretty important. Oh, it was no, a big you... job, <laughs> and they wanted to read me this morning on Dirty Friday. No, no, we've got a bunch of fellas, I think, that are going to get short chains. Oh. Oh. I think this will end up getting back around. I think uh, Leo, Leo, breaks are thinking of pass. Leo, you have anything to say to them? Uh, nothing I can say on the air, boys. <laughs> Leo, hold on the line, okay? Much obliged. You've been Don't stung on Dirty Friday. The crew wanted to get you. It's 753 Lamont and Tonelli. Raymond, Sting, and Bernie. Raymond, Sting, and Bernie. Morning clouds burning off. Highs in the uh, 80s today. Hello, this is Kevin. Good morning, uh, Kevin. Yeah. Is this uh, Kevin? Uh, Kevin. Yes. Hi, Kevin. How are you this morning? Good. Uh, I uh, you don't know me. I bid on your condominium up at um, at Squam. Oh, good. And uh, I've been meaning to get in touch with you for the past week, but I've been a little busy and I haven't really had time to do so. But I want to know a few details on like the condo and that kind of thing and. Uh, and uh, yeah, just a few of the details concerning the uh, the package. Well, now uh, I have this for a week. Is that correct? That's right. Okay, and I can pick whatever day is open, like when you're not using it. Well, y yeah, I've, actually, I've got a, I've got a, 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 a time slots, and I'll just I'll give you the list of those, and you can pick the week that you want in uh -huh. the time slots. Oh, okay, because I, I thought it was like your personal condo. Well, uh, it 
I own it with four other people. Okay, okay I see. And and uh, we've uh, so you split we divide it? we divide the year up. Yeah. Oh, okay, I see. All right. Um, well, here here's the deal, Kevin. Um, I'm just kind of curious. Uh, what's the parking like there? Well, it's it has a, a one car drive-in garage and a uh -huh. and a long driveway. And uh, so, well, how many how many motorcycles do you think I could get in the garage and on the driveway? Motorcycles. Uh huh. Well, I don't know. Pretty long driveway. Maybe I can get like 25, 30 motorcycles on? I wouldn't know why you'd want to. Uh, the place only sleeps four people. Uh, uh, now, hold on. What do you mean four people? It says it's a two-bedroom place, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, two couples. That's, you know, normally... Well, if we if we bring, like, sleeping bags or a couple extra pillows and everything, do you think I could get, like, 30, 30 guys in there? Well, for God's sake, how many people do you think you're going to put in the place? Well, I was going to have about 35, 40 people come up for a motorcycle rally for the uh, for the club. For the club? Yes. Who in the hell did I rent this thing to? Well, uh, I, I'm a member of the, um, of the uh, Hell Biker Club. The what biker club? The Hell Bikers Club. The Who's Bikers Club? The Hell Bikers Club. Have you hey, never heard of us? There ain't no fun. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I wouldn't expect that out of we, a dad. We have to, well, he feels very strongly about this. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to call him back and tell him we're dicking with him. Hello. Good morning, Kevin. This is Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Uh, it's, it's John again. I bid on your condo. Listen. Hey, I've got to tell you something here. Don't, I donated that to a church auction. Listen. I don't care if you're bikers for Christ. You're not going to take a bunch of people look, up there and I wreck bid, my place. I bid on that fair and square. I don't square. care. I'll have the church give you back your money. You're just not going to go up and That place is in a gated community, for God's sake. I, You'll get me and my friends kicked out. I bid on that fair and square. I don't care. The, you're the, not getting the keys. What do you mean I'm not getting the keys? You're not getting the keys. I'll have the church give you back the money. What the? F now for a church That's a man. That's nice church going man. What's a church man like that doing talking like that? <laughs> I think you cut him off a little bit early. <laughs> he said, what in the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are you oh, no. talking about? <laughs> Candlestick against New England. We had that Tony and Alba's prize package to give away later. Yeah. Hello. Well, Kevin, look, don't hang up on me again. I bid on this fair and square. And I want that condo. I've got 30 friends expecting to go up and take advantage of this condo. Well, you're we've all pooled gonna our money. To with to, going to have to learn to live with a little disappointment. But we, we've all pooled our money. And, we, and you know what? I'll tell you, I'll sue. Go ahead. I'll sue, bro. Go ahead. It was a donation. Hey, I know where the condo is. We're going to take our bikes up there anyway. We're going to park it on the lawn, baby. There ain't no lawn, so you don't know where it's at. Hey, you know, and another thing I want to tell you, your daughter, she's the one who set this whole thing up, isn't she? What are you talking about? Your daughter told us to give you a call. It's Lamont Tinelli at 92.3 KSJO. Kevin, it's Dirty Friday. You're on the radio, bro. Oh, God, I had no idea who rented that place. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, good morning. You're on the air. Oh. Hey, I already got my partners all upset in this place. I called them and said, we got a problem here. <laughs> <laughs> well, she said, Hilarious. this place is your pride and joy to give you a call this morning. <laughs> you, have any, you have anything to say to your daughter, Carrie? And she's dead. She's dead. <laughs> Hold on the line. <laughs> oh, God, I love Dirty Friday. On Dirty Friday. There we go. 575-KSJO. Hello? Good morning. Is uh, Mrs. Please. Uh, this speaking. Hi. Uh, Janice? Yes. Okay, hi. Uh, I'm representing the uh, buyer. I'm calling from... Realty. Yes. And I'm calling in regards to uh, my client and uh, the sale of your home. My name is uh, uh, Harvey Balsack. I'm sorry? My name is uh, Harvey Balsack. Okay. And I'm calling in regards to um, the termite report that just came across my desk this morning. What? Um, I'm afraid, uh, Janet, I've got some bad news. You're kidding. Concerning the termite report, it, it seems that your, your home is infested with termites. What? And, uh, in order for this sale to go through, um, you're, you're going to have to pretty much take care of the termite damage. 
Well, you know, we, we got it inspected, and they said it was fine. So I don't understand what, what, what well, this is all hold on. about. When did you have it inspected, though? Because this is the brand-new termite report, the latest termite report. Well, we got it inspected about seven months ago. Well, yeah, but this is the termite report we do on the basis of selling your home. And it's a very thorough termite report. Now, I don't know who did the last one for you, but there's like $10,000 worth of damage to the foundation of your home. How, how much damage? $10,000 damage. Ten thousand dollars that's the estimate that we received from uh from uh nators well you know, i i don't i don't understand how there could be ten thousand dollars worth of look we're, you know uh, we're supposed to be moving into a new house this was supposed to be taken care of uh, the deal well, was done ma ma and now you're telling me that we have to pay for ten thousand dollars worth of damage well uh, my client is not going to take a home we're, we're buying this home under the premise that it's an a1 condition we're well, not going to buy a home with ten thousand dollars worth of repairs to it Unless you want to take it off the price of your home. No, I'm not taking 10000 No. No, absolutely not. And you know what? Well, I, look, I, look now, you know what? Maybe I should talk to your husband because maybe he's more familiar with the way these home sales things go. Oh, wait a minute. What's that supposed to mean? Well, I mean, you may not be familiar with the way negotiations are handled in, in the sales of homes. And I'd like to talk to him because I'm sure... With, with someone who's got a little knowledge on, on the way <laughs> these things work. Wait a minute, a little knowledge? A little knowledge. Like, I don't have any knowledge of well, what's going on. Well, then with... you would know that you're responsible for the, the termite repairs. Wait, no. You know what? I, I'm not going to have you speak to, to, to my husband because I'm the one that's doing this whole deal. He's not even involved in it that much. So if you want to speak to somebody about this, you're going to have to speak to me. Well, and you know what? I'm really, really, well, look, really offended that you would take that, that, that kind of attitude if you that were I'm a, just a woman. That if I you were a man, you would understand that this is the way business is done. Well, I understand that this is the way business is done, but you know what? I kind of think this is a ploy for them to get the, the house for less money. Well, Janice, you know what? You could not be more dead wrong. As a matter of fact, the reason I'm calling you this morning, your husband, his name is Harry? Yes, his name is Harry. Well, the, the man of the house, the guy that I should be talking to, actually called me up this morning. It's Lamont Tonelli on KSJO. Janice, you're on the air. It's Dirty Friday. Well, Janice, you're on the radio. Uh, <laughs> Good morning. Janice. Oh, great. Do you have anything to say to your husband? Yes. I don't know if he's going to be moving into the house now. Oh. <laughs> Do you have any idea what we're going through? Uh, well, it sounds like the deal is almost done. Uh, yeah, there's going to be another deal that's going to be done too tonight. <laughs> I bet there is. Hold if on. he's listening, yes. I, I really don't like you right now. Oh, I don't <laughs> like you. Hold on the line, okay, Janice? Hey, oh! Janice. And good luck in your new home. 913 on the rock. We're going to give a call here this morning. Nicholas. If we can get out of the KSGO phone system again. Do we have like the worst phone system in the world? Ah. Okay. There we go. By the way, Giants and the Braves tonight at Candlestick. Hello? Good morning. I'm looking for Nicholas. Please. That's me. Hi, Nick. How you doing? Uh, this is uh, John Schwanz calling from the um, uh, insurance. Oh, hey, John. And I'm calling in regards to uh, your bills and your claim. That have I'm looking at your file right now that's come across my desk. Great. Um, now, now let me get this straight, Nick. You uh, you hurt your back at work. Yeah, that's correct. Is that correct? And this happened approximately seven weeks ago. Is that right? Um. Yeah, about, about six or seven weeks ago. Okay. Uh, look, Nick, the reason I'm calling you is uh, I'm, I'm looking at the doctor's reports here. Oh, good. And it seems to me that what we're getting here is the doctors are saying that your back should be okay right now. And it's been cleared up for about three weeks. Um, well, I wish it was better. It's definitely not. Well, Nick, according you see, we just take the company's doctor's word for it. And as a result, we can't cover some of your bills here. What? I was, I was told it was going to be all taken care of. Well, yeah, the necessary treatments. But we feel that some of the treatments were excessive. What? what what's excessive? I mean, I, I still have to go to, to physical therapy every week. Well, some of your physical therapy visits were a little excessive. What do you mean excessive? I mean, my back is still wrecked. I can't go to work, and and I have to. I'm 
I mean, they're telling me I still have to go. The doctor's telling me i got to go to physical therapy. I can barely walk. Well, according to the doctor's report we're reading here, it indicates that your, your back is A-OK -okay and you're fit to work. Well, I mean, that's a report. My back is not okay. I mean, I, I know my back. I can, I can barely walk. Well, you know, Nicholas, uh, you, that, that's what you're claiming here. But we, we have the doctor's report indicating that after three to four weeks of the therapy that you've received, you should be A-OK. -okay. Well, what is your name again? Is it John? John Schwantz, yes. John, listen, I don't know what report you're reading, but my back is not okay, and I can barely walk, and I'm trying to go to rehab so I can get back to work. And, and that's just the, the simple truth of it. My back is not okay. Well, Nick, Nicholas, you know, I, I, I have trouble believing you because I'm looking at the official reports here, and the official stance from the company is we don't cover anything excessive. Well, that's crap because my back is still is still wrecked. I mean, I can barely walk. I mean, how am I going to even get back to work if I can't continue my physical therapy? And I definitely can't pay for this. I'm not working. Well, what do you mean you can't pay for it? You're, you're liable for your medical bills. If you read the small print of your health coverage... No, I, I'm supposed to be totally covered when well, I Well, you are for the, the necessary job. medical treatment, sir. Listen, I got hurt at work... Mm -hmm. I can't go to work because I've got hurt at work. Don't you agree seven weeks a little excessive, you faker? What? I can barely walk. What do you mean? You know, Nicholas, the, the way we look at it, seven weeks is a little prolonged for your condition. Listen, I know people that have had bad backs for years. You're telling me seven so weeks? So now you're threatening years. Is that correct? No, I'm not threatening years. I've only been out for seven weeks. I'm still going to physical therapy, doing what they told me to do. Well, I want to get back have to, to work. You'll have to cover your own bills, sir. I can't pay my own bills. I don't know how, I mean, what do you want me to do? I can't pay them. What I'd like you to do is turn on your radio to 92.3 KSJ or 92.1, because it's Lamont Tonelli calling. You're on the air, Nicholas. It's Dirty Friday. The guys at work said to give you a call. Oh, my God. Good morning. Nick, do you have anything to say to the guys at work? They miss you. I'm going to kill them. <laughs> Yeah, that's a common response on Dirty Friday. <laughs> Nick, you hold on the line, okay? We got a little something for you and your back, all right? All right. All right, bro. There we go. Dirty Friday, reaming, stinging, burning at 575-KSJO-1800. Nick couldn't believe what was happening to him. 575-KSJO. Yeah, that's a perfect example of kicking somebody while they're down on Dirty Friday. Good morning. I'm looking for Teresa, please. Uh, speaking. Hi, Teresa. How are you doing? I'm calling from Aft Rentals up at the uh, Delta. Yes. Concerning your uh, your houseboat rentals. Yes. And uh, I'm afraid we've got a bit of a problem here. Oh, you're kidding. Uh-uh. We, uh, as you well know, we have our units in constant demand. And when they come in, we uh, we clean them up and we get them ready for our next rental. Uh -huh. And we just had someone return the, uh, the houseboat that you'll be renting tomorrow. It just came in, and um, I'm afraid we will not have this houseboat available for you. What? Uh, I'm, we, the houseboat will not be available. There was some damage to it. There, uh, they, they cracked the hull, and uh, we, I guess they hit a sewer line or something. They were going too fast. The propeller damage that, ha that, that took place, we can't repair it in time. And you have nothing else? And it, that's how you schedule your your people that close to where there's if somebody does happen to do something there's nothing else available for somebody else Teresa all of our units are in high demand in the summer season and we can't help it if we have major damage like this well maybe you don't understand what it took for me to get I got six girlfriends here we all work at six different places do you know what it took to try and get us all at the same schedule, all get the same time off? Well, I mean, husbands, boyfriends, lovers, all that other kind of stuff had to go take a back seat because we needed a girl's week off. And now you're well, telling me, wait, well, wait, at 9.30 in the morning, well, while I'm rushing around the house trying to get Jess to go to work. Ter Teresa, Teresa, I, like, I understand this may create a little hardship for you, but we, have, we do not have another unit to rent you for this weekend. Well, is, what, is there something else you're planning to do here? I mean, because well, I've got the entire week off. Well, well, you know, I'm glad you, you have the whole week off. Uh, is it possible this boat should be fixed up by next Thursday? Next Thursday. So if I can get you to wait a few days 
and bring the and the, bring the crew up. Maybe I can get it for you from Thursday of, of next week and carry it over to like Tuesday of the week after. And what am I supposed to do for the rest of the time? And, and the rest of us are supposed to do for the rest of this time until Thursday that we've got off with nothing to do? Well, well, Teresa, it's not possible. Maybe you can go to a baseball game or something. Baseball. That's going to be a substitute for a week on a houseboat. Baseball. Well, you, Teresa, I, there's really nothing I can do. We don't have the unit to give you. How about, you know, I do believe we have a secondary boat here. That if we can get you a boat, how does that sound? A boat. Yeah. We have like a rubber dinghy that you guys can have during the day. You won't oh. be able to sleep on it, obviously, but at least you'll have a watercraft to, to, to you know, go around the Delta. Yeah, dinghy. You can kiss my dinghy. I'll tell you what, I'd like to do that, Teresa. It's Lamont Tonelli calling from 92.3 KSJL. You're on the air. Oh, it's, my God. It's Dirty Friday, Teresa. <laughs> oh, my God. Good morning. Teresa! Kiss oh my, my dinghy, God. baby! It's just a little dinghy, though, Teresa. <laughs> uh, Teresa, my dinghy or your dinghy? Teresa, your girlfriend said to give you a call this morning. Oh, am I going to have something to say to them later? Oh, you sure will. <laughs> well, they said you've been busting your butt making these plans, and they wanted to sting you on Dirty Friday. Kiss my dinghy, baby. Uh, yeah, oh, they're yeah, going to be kissing my dinghy pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, Teresa. We have something for you. Teresa, hold on the line, okay? <laughs> Did you hear that laugh? <laughs> <laughs> she does not sound like she's amused. He's like, hey, hey, screw you, pal. <laughs> she sure has a good dinghy. <laughs> Hello? Good morning. I'm looking for uh, Patty. Please. Hi, uh, speaking. Hi, Patty. How are you this morning? This is John uh, Paratesti calling from the uh, Santa Clara apartment. I'm okay. Uh, good. I'm calling in regards to a recent piercing that you had done. Yeah? Uh, we're investigating a case of uh, hepatitis emanating from the uh, piercing parlor where you had your pier piercing performed. Um, okay, well, um, if you're really from the health department, where to get my... Where I get my uh, belly button pierced. Uh, you had your piercing done at uh, First Street. Okay. All right, and uh, we're just going through the records. We're uh, we're contacting everyone who was in there within the last three weeks. Now you had yours done last week. Is that correct? Um. Yeah. All right. Have you had any problems with your piercing so far? Well, like, what do you mean? Well, uh, did you have uh, any redness around the pierced area? Um. Well, yeah, I mean, this morning, mm -hmm. I looked at it, and it's really red. It, it's really red around your piercing? Yeah. Would you say maybe it's a little infected? Well, kind of. I mean, it's it's like, yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of it's a little swollen, but I just kind of thought that was because, you know, because it was pierced. Now, did you have any painful discharge at all? Did I what? Did you have a painful discharge at all? Um, not really. All right, well, at least we've got that good. Now, I'll tell you what, I'm a little concerned by the fact that it's red, because that's been one of the symptoms from uh, some of the other people that have tested positive here. So what I'd like to do to ease your mind and my mind, yeah. before we go on with any more testing, let's do a quick phone test, all right? Okay. Okay. Um, do, do you have any ice there? Um, yeah, in my freezer. C can you go and get some ice for me, please? Okay, we have to hold on so sure. you get it. All right. Okay, I will be on. more than happy to hold here. Okay. All right, you have some ice? Uh-huh. Now, what we'd like you to do, uh, we'd like you to ice your nipples. Now, we're doing this to see if it has spread at all. Okay. Okay, to um, see if the infection has spread through your system, and that's the first place it would go from your navel. Okay. Um, hold on, let me, let me um, take my shirt off. Okay, put down the phone, take your shirt okay, off. Okay, hold on. Okay. Okay, do you, um, can I just do one at a time, or do I have to... Does it matter? Uh, we, I, I think what we should do is both. Okay. All right. All right. Because it may be in one nipple, may not have spread to the other. God, it's so cold. Okay. 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 Um. All right. I have I have an ice on on my nipples oh. here. Okay. Now take it off. Okay. Now has the ice had any effect on your nipples? Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, I I, I have like really big nipples anyway, but now they're sticking out more. They're sticking out more. Yeah. Can you describe They're your really nipples? Sticking out. Can you describe your nipple action? What? Can you describe how your nipples look at the moment? Well, they're like they're like they're like they look like um, pencil erasers. They're like really big. Do they normally look like that though? No, not normally. All right. Well, I think I think they may be okay by the response there, 
And I can't wait to hear your response because, Patty? Yeah? Your mother, Elsie, said to give you a call this morning. It's Lamont and Tonelli on Dirty Friday, and she said, gotcha. How do you know my mom? What? <laughs> No, no, your mother called the radio station this morning. We're not the health department. She, she let it's, us know about your piercing. It's Lamont and Tonelli. Oh, my God. Good morning. And we got you. No way. Yes. <laughs> you guys are total freaks. You, <laughs> you can either put your shirt back on or take off the rest of your clothes. <laughs> oh, my God. And how big are your nipples anyway? They are, like, huge. <laughs> <laughs> and so, like, uh, everybody heard that. Uh, yes, yes, they sorry. did. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hold on, pencil eraser. Hey, Patty, oh. how, how do you like your piercing? I love it. You do. You're glad you got it done. Yeah. All right. Well, hold on the line, okay? We may have a little something for you. Sully? Yes? Get her some, like, uh, pencils to go along with those erasers. You know, it's, it's start, hey, Patty, it starts with the navel. Before you know it, you're going to be doing other body parts. I mean, I can't believe it. I'm, like, talking to you guys with, like, drippy nipples. <laughs> that may be a medical condition. <laughs> hold on the line. Okay. Uh, All right. There. Hello. Good morning. Is uh, Denise there, please? Um, speaking. Hi, Denise. How are you this morning? This is uh, John from uh, Allstate Insurance. Yes. And I'm calling in regards to um, your claim regarding your Honda Civic. Uh, okay. Uh, Denise, now it, it seems to me you've already went ahead and, and had your car repairs done? Yeah, I was getting a little tired of waiting for it to be taken care of, so I just went ahead and did it. Okay, so basically what you're waiting for is uh, the uh, the deductible then? Uh, yeah, I'm waiting to get reimbursed. Okay, and, and your deductible $500, is that correct? Yes. Uh, Denise, he kind of like threw a, a curveball by going ahead and getting this done because we're having problems with the other party's insurance company. They're now stating that you are at fault in this accident. Well, that's a crock because uh, the accident was 100% their fault. Well, apparently the other party involved in the accident is now stating that you are the one in, in, at, at fault in this accident. So well, you hit them. Uh, yeah, I hit them. I was stopped. They hit me, and they rear-ended me. I was at a stop sign. Well, they're, they're, they're claiming that you backed into them at oh, the stop yeah. sign. Yeah, what, what I'm going to check, you know something? I am so sick of you insurance people. I can't Well, no, no, hey, Denise, don't take it out on me. I'm, I'm representing you. Well, yeah, you are, but what, do you, what did you do when they were accusing me of having it be my fault? Well, I just have, I said, well, I've got to talk to my client and find out more details on this accident. So you were sitting there at a stop sign. Right. And what happened? And uh, just waiting for the, for the signal to turn, turn green. Oh, at a stop light then, okay. Get your story straight. Well, stop. If you say stop sign or stop light. It's a stop light. So you're sitting at a stop light. Yes. And what happened? And I was waiting for it to turn green, and all of a sudden... You put it in reverse? No. No. God, no. I was sitting there waiting for the light to turn green. Well, I'm just checking. You have an automatic. Yes. You have an automatic, and you left it in drive. Yes. There's no possible way you could have actually backed into these people. Absolutely not. <sighs> God, we're sitting in a messy situation. This may go to arbitration here. Well, I don't understand how, because we've, I've got a police report even stating that I was sitting there waiting for the light to change and I don't know what in the world they were doing because they just came slamming into the back of me. Well, now, does this, Denise, does this create a problem if you sit and wait on this money for a couple of months? Because it may take a couple of months for arbitration. Well, it's going to take longer for my body to heal from all this. I mean, I still let's not even start talking about the neck and back. Well, yeah, but but if you're but if you're at fault in this accident, well, then you've got to take care of that as well. That'll oh, be covered under that'll be covered under a different part of your insurance. No, 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 no. my fault, my ass. No, I don't think so. Well, Denise, uh, let me let me tell you, we, we've got your ass here on the air. It's Lamont Tonelli on Dirty Friday. You're on the air. Your boyfriend set you up. Oh, God. God, yes. Good morning. Oh, yeah, right. Good morning. Dirty Friday, my <laughs> ass.
hit my ass, my head, and my back. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Hold on the line, okay, Denise? Don't go away. <laughs> it's 7.57, <laughs> Lamont and Tonelli. Raymond, stinging, burning with Dirty Friday. Hello? Good morning. Is uh, Tony... Please. Yeah, you got him. Hi, Tony. How are you this morning? I'm calling from AJ's. Hey, and, hey, yeah, and, okay. Uh, the reason I'm calling you, uh, we we traced your number down through the phone book. You left your credit card here at the bar. I did. Yeah. Oh, let me check. Okay. I, I should have my credit card. I, I don't remember that I left it there. Your visa? The, hold on a sec. Oh, I don't got it. I don't got it. You got my credit card. Yes, we got your credit card. You left it at the bar. <laughs> I was probably so drunk I forgot how I forgot I left it there. Well, now, now, would you want us to mail it to you? No, 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 mail it to me. No, well, don't, don't, don't mail it to me. I'll come by and pick it up. Why? Why? Uh, think about it because uh, yeah, you know, I told my wife I was. Uh, I don't want my wife to find. I told her I was like working out. You know, I don't want her to know that I was there. Oh, okay, I understand. You know, I told her I was doing something different. You, you know. Okay. I told her I was working out, so so she gets it. I mean, she already made me promise I wouldn't go there no more. Oh, really? Why? You used to come here all the time? Oh, man. Forget about it. You, you guys got some uh, some great-looking women there. Yeah, yes, we do. We pride ourselves on that. Oh, man. That naughty Nicole? Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Did you enjoy her awesome. show? Oh, man. Awesome. Awesome. I mean, my, you know, that's why. I don't want her knowing nothing. Me and the guys go out go to have a good time, blow off some steam. Well, that's you know, cool. Check the girls out. Well, we'd love to have you here. I got to ask you a question. Uh-huh. You guys, you know, I wanted to ask you this before. Did the girls ever do, like, private parties? You know, if we wanted to rent them out, you know, uh, you could do something like that. Well, no, you see, normally AJ's girls don't do that. We run a very clean ship here. Yeah, I got that. But, I mean, we just, you know, we want to get to know them better maybe, you know, uh, like on a regular basis. Like, we make it we make it worth their while, you know. So we make what, it worth what, what do you mean get to know them on a regular basis? Well, you know, I You want to have parties with your friends? Yeah, yeah, you and know. And just I rent mean, the we, girls to come out to your parties? Yeah, 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 yeah. We make it worth their while, you know. We take care of everybody. You know. Uh, Tony? Yeah, yeah, so, you know. So, Tony, I, you know, once again, I got to tell you, we don't do that here. Uh, if, if you, if you want to meet the girls, you've got to come to the bar. I tell you, we, we, I tell you, we, we make it worth it, though, because we, we love those girls, man. They're awesome. Yeah, you and They're your friends. Awesome. Yeah. So, all right, well, you know, it's, uh, I'll go come by and pick up the credit card, because I don't want you to send it to the house. Okay, well, Tony, be before you do that, you, you may want to check in. I'm telling you, man, because my wife finds out about that. <laughs> I'm dead. I made up, she made me promise I would never go back there, but of course, you know, hey, yeah, I, it's I, I do it whenever to stay I away, can. exactly. Yeah. Hey, you, you know, Tony, yeah. your wife's name is Carol? Yeah, yeah. She already knows. How do you know my wife's name? Well, she already knows that you were down, down there. Because How does she know that? It's Lamont and Tonelli on 92.3 KSJO. It's Dirty Friday. Oh, no. She said to give you a call. Oh, man. You're on the air, bro. Oh, no. Tell me that's not oh, true. Oh, it is true. No. Good it is true. As a matter of fact, she has your credit card in her wallet. No. Yes, yes sir. Apparently, a, one, of the, oh, man. one of the guys in your group was talking to his wife, and it got back to Carol. Oh, man. She says right, she... This is going to cost me, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You still want those girls for private parties? No. Oh. no, 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 no. Hey, hey, you weren't sliding that card through more than just an ATM slot, were you? Oh, oh, tell her I, oh man, I am dead meat. Yes, yes, you are. You hold on, okay, Tony. Oh, we we have a Casio t-shirt to keep you warm when you're sleeping on the street tonight. Oh, thanks a lot, thanks okay. a lot. Hold on the line. It's 824. Hello? Good morning, I'm looking for Suzanne. Suzanne. Hi, Suzanne. How are you? I'm calling from the country uh, club. Yes. Hi. Hey, hi. And uh, we're just going over the uh, the contract here for your wedding. Right. And uh, the uh, the member that sponsored you in, Mr. Uh, yes. Um, I don't know how to tell you this. He has revoked his sponsorship. Uh, there must be a misunderstanding. For he your would event, do that. huh? For he he's revoked the sponsorship for your event. Are you sure? Absolutely. He he uh, he wrote a, a, a very uh, descriptive letter yesterday. Now, it, it's been learned that he doesn't actually know you or your your husband to be. Is that correct? No, he knows us. It's my husband's cousin. Well, according according to Mr. Jorgensen, with, with the club did a little investigation because we're cracking down on uh, on members sponsoring strangers into the club. And and he came clean and said, hey, he didn't want to be at large. And at risk for incurring any expenses for strangers. When it was ex explained to him, the uh, the position he was putting himself in. Well, we've already put a deposit down. We're supposed to use it in less than ten days. 
Well, I understand that because you're booked for next Saturday. Right. However, uh, in in light of this recent development and Mr. Uh, Mr. Canceling out, it seems that the club will no longer be available because it's only available to members or their guests. Well, we already signed the contract. Well, yes, but it, it was dependent on a member sponsoring you. Right. The member has revoked his sponsorship. Well, what can we do about this? I'm supposed to be getting married there next Saturday. Well, what we can do is we can send back your deposit. Oh, no, no, no. I need to figure out. I've already sent out the invitations months ago. Um, we need to figure this out. What can I do? Well, I have to have it there. Well, Suzanne, there's nothing really we can do for you. The member has, has revoked the sponsorship. Can I double the deposit payment? No, no, Suzanne, you see, you, you, you don't understand the way our charter works here at the club. Doubling, if, if we just double the deposit, we could have done that for anybody. My husband knows, my husband-to-be, excuse me, knows a lot of people, and we have plans to have our reception there. I don't know what to say, but we've, we've already made these plans, and this is our wedding. Well, Suzanne, I don't think, I don't think Mr. Uh, is an option on this. What's he, your name? My name is Mr. Furskin calling. I'm the uh, director of the uh, country club. Is there anybody else I can talk to about this? No, ma'am. I've taken this uh, this matter. I'm, I'm as, far, as high up as you can go on the ladder here. Now, what I can say is uh, you're still single at the moment. Is that correct? Right. You know, um, I'm a single and lonely man. <laughs> I'm sorry, but we have made these plans way in advance. We've given you the deposit. You can't back out on this. We have a contract. Is there anything else we can do? We've got well, to have it there. That, that's what I was just getting to, Suzanne. I'm a, I'm a very lonely man. I'm, I spend most of my time I dedicate it to developing the club, and I don't get a chance to date much. My father will be calling you back. <laughs> oh, oh, that was quick. <laughs> <laughs> that was quick. Get... <laughs> My father? She didn't even let me finish your, your proposal. I don't want to date your father. <laughs> against Seattle and the Raiders Sunday against Green Bay. Hello. Good morning. I'm looking for uh, Suzanne. Please. I'm sorry. She's not in. Uh, uh, who am I speaking to? Uh, you're speaking to her mother. Hi, this is John Barsham calling from the uh, country club. And I'm calling in regards to her... You no, know, right now, I don't think we really want to be speaking to you. Excuse me? Uh, she explained to me uh, your earlier conversation. Well, yeah, yeah it seems that we, we had some misunderstanding and she hung up on me. I don't think there's much misunderstanding about what you uh, you said to her regarding uh, exchanging the, uh, the favors for the room. No, ma'am, she must have misunderstood. I was explaining to her I'm a very lonely man, and that's why I dedicate myself to the country club. Well, uh, I tell you, right now she is uh, has left to meet with her father, and, and they are working with our, our attorneys uh, because we are very disturbed that you would even consider. No, ma'am, ma'am, and that had nothing to do with the cancellation of the wedding date. The well, fact is the sponsor who sponsored the wedding date in has backed out of this. Well, that's not how it came across, and, and you've, you've just, you absolutely picked the wrong people to mess with because this is absolutely the most offensive thing I have ever heard of, ma 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 regardless of what you were trying to get across to her. Ma'am, be before you go off the deep end here, maybe, now Jeff, who is Jeff? That would be her fiancé. Her fiancé? Well, he said to give Suzanne and yourself a call this morning. It's Lamont and Tonelli on Dirty Friday on KSJO. Good morning. Good morning. Now... <laughs> What's what is KSJO? Okay, it's it's a rock and roll radio station. Jeff said to give Suzanne a call and dick around with her this morning uh, on the air. Well, Don't, where do I come into this? That's well, not Well, you fair. answer the phone. <laughs> you answer the phone, ma'am. Well, well, poor Jeff. Yes, he is. I guess, I guess you'll have a little motherly advice <laughs> on how she should handle Jeff on her wedding night. Oh. Oh boy, uh, I don't know if she's gonna if he's gonna like it. Uh, <laughs> hey, you, you hold on the line, okay? We got a little something for you. And, so, and, 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 and what, is, what is your name? Um, my name is Joan. Oh, Joan. Hey, Joan, we've got a KSJO T-shirt that you can wear to the wedding. Hey, congratulations <laughs> to the new addition to your family this weekend. Well, thank you. I'm sure we're gonna oh, be no, happy to next have. Oh, next weekend. Next weekend. Next, next weekend. Yeah, you hold on, okay? We're gonna okay. set you up big time. Thank you.